All right, everyone, today we are going to learn how to use the mirror tool to save ourselves some time in Inventor. We're going to make this simple heart, which is symmetric along one axis. You can see here, if I rotate it, you can see it's clearly symmetric about this vertical axis. And so if we're modeling it, we want to model only half of it and save ourselves some time and not have to do the whole, whole other half. So let's go into how we actually go ahead and do that. First, we're going to create a new part in Inventor. So we'll go to new part. And then the first things we do are going to be change our units two centimeters. So you go up here to the tools tab, then document settings. You go to the units tab here, change your length to centimeters and your mass to kilograms and hit apply. And then we want to save our work so that we don't lose it. Now, right now our file is empty, but this way we can just hit control S on our keyboards and save it periodically as we go. So I'm gonna go save as, I have a couple different things here, so a couple different projects, and I'm going to call this project uh, my name, so uh, Dr. Wabi, and then Origami Heart. And I'm going to make that not capitalized, so we'll go ahead and save that. Now, obviously, it's empty right now, but now we are ready to get off to the races. We're going to start with our 2D sketch. We'll always start with our XY plane, just to keep things consistent. And I'm going to start by just drawing in roughly a few things. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a construction line. Now, a construction line is different from our regular sketch lines in that it is a line that is only there to help us with our geometry. It's not going to be part of our final sketch. It's just there to help us line things up. Um, and so you'll see what I mean in a second. But to toggle construction mode on, you select this button up here. It's this little red stick-looking thing. Um, and this is a toggle. If I click it, it doesn't look like anything's happening. I can click anywhere else. It's not letting me do anything. That's because any geometry I make now is going to be construction lines you'll see that these lines are all dashed lines indicating that they are not going to be real geometry. If I tried to make my whole shape out of these, they will ultimately end up, I won't be able to extrude them, I won't be able to do anything with them. But I can use them to guide other things. And then when I'm done with construction mode, I can toggle construction mode off. You can see it's not highlighted anymore. And then I can make regular lines. And you can see how these lines are solid lines. These are going to be part of actual geometry. You can reference them to these construction lines, but the construction lines will not be useful for like extrusion and whatnot. So I'm going to delete all of that stuff, and I'm going to start by making a construction line that I'm going to use to mirror my thing later. So I'm going to make it along this axis of symmetry of my object, which is going to be this center uh, vertical line here. And the height of this doesn't really matter. I'm just going to make it 10 centimeters for now. You can see that goes off my screen. I'm going to hit the home button on my keyboard, which will zoom out. So I'll do that now. Um, or, and also if you need to pan, you can click and hold your middle mouse wheel and you can pan around. But say you're also zoomed in and you can't figure out how, you can come over to your little icon over here, click on the house button. It'll zoom out, but it'll put you in kind of isometric view. Click on front. And then you just have to zoom back in. So that's a little bit about getting around there. So now that I have this construction line, I'm going to toggle construction mode off because I want to actually create my geometry now. This is going to be the geometry that I actually use for this heart. So I'm toggling it off. Again, it's not highlighted now. I'm going to go to my line tool, and I'm going to roughly draw in the shape of this heart. I'm not going to worry too much about all of these things right now, um, and I'll fix the dimensions later. And so I'm just kind of putting things in roughly. And so this looks sort of right, but now I need to actually give it dimensions and constrain it properly. So I'm going to start by dimensioning things. <coughs> Again, we use our dimension tool. Dimension tool is not for measuring, it's for constraining. It's for telling the shape exactly how long it needs to be in a given dimension. So I'm going to click here. Now, if I pull it to the left, I'm dimensioning based on the height. If I pull it down, I'm uh, dimensioning the length. And I can click again. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to click again, and I'll be dimensioning the length of the segment independent of the angle it's going. I'm going to dimension both the length and the height because that is easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll say this is 5 centimeters. I'm going to pull it to the left. We'll say that's also 5 centimeters. Let's say that this is 2 centimeters. Let's say that this is also 2 centimeters. And let's say that this is also two centimeters, and you can see our heart's starting to get a little wonky. Let me adjust these dimensions a little bit. Let's make this, oh, 1.25. Let's make this, we want these to line up. Let's make this 1.25. And then let's make, we want these to be equal. So we'll make this 2.5. 
and I'm going to make this 1.25. And you can see now it's telling me this thing is over constrained. That's weird because I seems like I should be able to do more with this. Uh, one thing you can do if it gives you this error is click on show constraints and look at the different pieces that you're um, that you're looking at. And sometimes it will show you what things are constrained. This one has a perpendicular constraint to this thing. I'm just going to delete that. We'll get more into that later, but that's not important for now. And then I'm just going to go ahead and force that to be 1.25. And then this should still give me an over constraint error because of all that. Don't worry too much about that. Now I have a shape for my heart. Uh, now I need to actually mirror it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mirror tool. The mirror tool is over here in this kind of pattern section. It's a mirror pattern. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up this really unhelpful dialog box. What's going on is this left tool is for selecting geometry, and this right tool is for selecting the line that you want to mirror things about. So you can kind of click on these cursors, and it changes the mode. I'm going to click on this left cursor, which is the select cursor. I'm going to click on all the geometry I want to select. Alternately, I could click and drag, <coughs> but I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to select all of the geometry I want to mirror. I'm going to select mirror line, which is then going to select the line I actually want to mirror about, which is this vertical construction line. And I hit apply. Boom. It's done. Now, because this right side is a copy of this left side, if I change one of these dimensions here, it will change it on both sides. So that's kind of useful. That means it knows that all this stuff has to be copies. Now, however, I can get into trouble if I try to change the dimension to something that's too small. You can see now part of my heart is overlapping itself. So you need to be a little bit careful with this. But now I'm done with my heart. I'm going to finish my sketch. And now you'll see this construction line still in the middle. But when I go to extrude, it's not going to make me select the different halves because that line's not actually real. And then, boom, I have my heart. So there we have it, a nice and easy way to mirror geometry in Inventor.